<laughs> when I say kick off, I didn't mean like just break the recording. <laughs> I'm not gonna. This is a real us. Huh? Good evening and welcome to Agile World number twenty. There's Sabrina's bloopers for you on that. Don't even know what happened there. I, I know, but the bloopers are, are, are the finest bit. <laughs> they are. They <laughs> the blue for him. We're not changing that unless you decide to cut that out later. And if you do, I've now just confirmed it. Um, <laughs> how are you? Can't now. There's no context for it. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Thanks. Uh, working on stuff for the uh, the fiesta event yes. uh so uh I don't so know if-, if you guys have heard about it the 28th is the day we're having our big fiesta um jump onto our meetup group i will add the link below on on the channel as well um it's going to be amazing we're not going to leak out too much information but myself and carl we took a little day off yesterday not a day off of each other which i think carl would have preferred <laughs> so we're just going down to the cellar <laughs> but no we took a day off we, we've got some little mini projects that we're working on and we needed a little bit of a break to focus on those areas so hopefully you can all sign up for the event and hopefully you'll be able to see the projects that we've been working on personally so but other than that how how's everything been with you carl yeah it's been good um still putting together my presentation for friday for my talk yeah. Um, which kind of makes me wonder if I, I shouldn't get get on with it since I've done the first two pages. Um, <laughs> Are you sure first Friday? No, it's Thursday. Is it? I can't remember. It's it's during the day. Thursday. Oh, Thursday. You're right. Thursday, Thursday. I'm evening. sorry. The, the lights are on, but nobody's in. Okay. <laughs> I hope you realise that the lights are on. Well, actually, the lights are a bit dim. <laughs> Twenty six at. Two, three. No, sorry, at three p.m. GMT time, you get to see Carl in the flesh with me in the background for once. <laughs> I see. It's impossible to put uh, you in the corner. Can't put Brina in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and oh yes, and we've got my event tomorrow, which is far. So that's around personal agility. So that's six p.m. GMT time, and I've got my wonderful colleague who I work with um, as an advisor. For Scrum Alliance, Cynthia. So um, we're all, we're all bunking off the the trustees meeting to attend. Uh, we're going to meet at the bike sheds beforehand, and then <laughs> and then nip off round to your event. Uh, we'll get this recorded first, though, tomorrow before then I run off to the event. But yeah, if Carl's not there, I'll be very unhappy. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what's the subject of the event? What do you? What's the? So it's around personal agility. So actually using agility at home, being able to organize yourself, and it's actually around goals as well. So we we try and achieve every year, January, we all do it. Sometimes on the 31st in the evening when we're in our drunken state for New Year's Eve, and we turn around and say that this year we're going to achieve this. And we all do set goals for ourselves, but we can actually be open and honest with ourselves. We Nine times at 10, we'll achieve one or two if lucky if you like myself i'm not gonna lie normally around about november i start to try and achieve my goals that i set in january so personal agility is going to be around i don't want to give too much information away but it's going to be around setting your personal goals and actually being able to break them down and achieve them and make sure you're achieving the right goals and also understand why have you put these goals in place and if they're not important nine times out of ten that's why you don't achieve them because they're no longer important but also understanding due to circumstances you need to pivot like we do in agile like we do in our agile work we do this in our personal life so that's just a bit of a snippet i don't want to go through too much it's really interesting because i i genuinely don't set goals each year I do. And and as probably like most women, it's normally to lose weight is one of them every single year. I and lost weight one year, but then I found it again. Yeah, I think we all do. We just wish it was a good <laughs> lockdown situation. But we do. I mean, I, I, mean, I will talk detail in this uh, when it comes to the call, but I had quite a few personal goals last year that I did actually have to pivot and change my goals because of, of, of what happened and what is yeah. still going. and the same I kind of moved those goals and then pivoted again for this year and I'm quite actually happy that I've actually been able to achieve quite a few of them one of them me physically being here on the screen was one of my actual goals oh really I didn't realize that 
It was. I was too scared to. If it wasn't for Carl here, I, I would never, ever, because my imposter syndrome would be kicking in left, right, and centre. And I'd be. You, you can't be the imposter here. I'm the imposter here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, right, one right. of my goals would have been, if I'd set any goals, to appear in pubs less often. On people's social media <laughs> and and indirectly i have achieved that so um well done COVID. thank you for the support i've actually drank more because <laughs> i'm not really a drinker i i'm a social drinker so whenever there's a party i am there i am there center stage whenever there's a party and i love to have a drink but i've never really been a drinker at home i don't have that social aspect at home my mm. husband he, he'll crack open a, a, a beer and he's quite happy in the evening to occasionally have a beer with me it just doesn't do it for me. And I've actually found that more social events being online at home, I have actually every Friday, I'm there with a gin or a bottle, small bottle of Prosecco, which you've probably big seen. Big bottle, big <laughs> bottle of Prosecco. Yeah, it's a small one that I fill up from the big one. Which is kind of <laughs> but yeah, I have drank, but not in, in an un, in bubble, more than what I usually would do. It used to be about once a month, maybe twice a month. I would I'm drinking drink. less. I, I'm finding I'm finding that I have less stress during yeah. a pandemic because I don't have a job, therefore I don't have the, all the stresses of working <laughs> and all and all the stresses that go with it. So um, I'm actually a lot less stressed. I'm drinking less because I'm not. I, I like going to pubs. I play pool um, for fun uh, and um, uh, hang out with my mates and talk nonsense, which is the purpose of hanging out with your mates. Um, but my my mates all live in in Bromley, and I live in Scotland. Yeah. So to go to the pub, I have to go to Bromley. <laughs> it's normally like a weekend thing. Another thing I've noticed through lockdown, I am actually using my um, my personal agility side, my Kanban boards, a lot more. So originally, I had which I'll go through more detail when if you join the call, but originally I had one on the fridge which was basically the organization of like the household side you know what possible bills that have come in through post or any things that need to go on the food shop and I've got my little Kanban board there but now it's turned into the fact I have a Kanban board in front of me which I've created I've got a stationary cupboard in front of me which you can obviously see and I've created a board there which I've split into work purposes and personal purposes then I've actually put a Kanban board in the gym Believe it or not, I have a Kanban board now in the gym, which kind of goes through the flow of the workouts I'm going to use. That's my home gym. I'm not breaking lockdown rules. It's a gym in the house. Just before. So, get... so do you have a Kanban board in your bowling alley and your private cinema as well? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just food. saying out loud what everyone's thinking wait a minute does this person live in a very large estate <laughs> no, no, no. I have a gym because obviously my my job involves me traveling a lot which means i'm away from my husband and my two puppies that's my family a little bit of personal self about me but when i come home i can't i don't really want to be leaving them because i could be away four or five five days a week and my husband having his own business as well he sometimes we're like passing ships and obviously, because I'm very passionate about the gym, we had a spare room. It was a dining room. It's really far away from the kitchen. We had space to put a dining room table in there. So I just said, you know, block up the fire and let's make a gym out of it. That is why I don't live in a, a castle. That's my dream. OK, I think I just saw the butler go past. <laughs> Later. Um... <laughs> OK, OK. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling quite. I'm feeling quite outclassed by the number of potential rooms that you have. I, I, either that, you, you live in the TARDIS, and every, uh, there's multiple spaces within your uh, hovel. <laughs> my personal agility. Yes, I have a Kanban board in my gym to kind of go through. It's, it's organising my workouts. It's organising what I'm going to do today. And it sounds silly, but as an example, there's certain days I won't do arm day because we all know when we do arm day. Next day, you're going to be sore. You, you are going to be sore. So there's certain days where I know I'm going to be very active and I'm going to be running a training session or something like that. Doing arm day the day before is not really a good idea because you, you struggle to move around after. So I kind of try and organize my workouts around the activities I have for work. So, yeah, using personal agility. And then obviously I've got another one for the renovations we're doing. So that's a bit about my so, so this is the stuff where you're planning it and Rob is doing it. Yeah, exactly, 100%. <laughs> I'm the product owner. And yes, does, has he agreed to this, or is this just an accidental uh, outcome that no, he's... Uh... 
do I show you? Right. So this is my husband's latest. Which way are you going to see it more? So you won't be able to see it. I will have a green screen very soon, but there is a bit of a contraption here. This is actually going to have my green screen that should be able to drop behind me when I require. The green screen isn't on that yet. It's still a work in progress. But I did put it on the backlog and I did prioritize it to the okay. top. I, I need to send you a, a video of uh, an angry crowd with pitchforks for you. <laughs> you can have that for when you're uh, presenting uh, Kanban for the first time to executives. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, my name is Sabrina, technically a witch, you know, that kind of not heard that one before, have we? So, no, well, I, I've never brought it up before. So, uh, so that's just a little snippet around personal agility. Obviously, I probably I'm not going to give any more. Why that. is it called far? Far. You have to wait and see. Come and join. Okay, okay. So it it, it reads a lot like um, Prince when he changed his name to the shape that used to be called Prince. No. Um, <laughs> Did it have a title and you just changed it to FAR so you get more no, interest? So FAR basically stands for Focus, Accomplishment and Reflect. See, I got you to give it away. Well done. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. I got tricked. <laughs> no, you weren't tricked. You were given an opportunity to fill the gap, which you did. Yeah. Thank you very much. And this is another skill that everyone needs to learn. Yes. <laughs> Sabrina so anyway so there's been some really amazing events that we went to over the weekend I got an opportunity to go to Stuart Young's um, event which was going through visual thinking um, which was a really 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 good session but that was with Sat as well because Sat, yep. Sat, between Sat and him they they kind of kicked off the whole visual component of the festival and taking yep. the concepts into or taking the ideas into true concepts so yep. And also you actually get, so um, it will should be on the archive now. And if it's not, it should be there very soon, but you actually get an opportunity where it does show you how to do some drawings. Now, visual thinking isn't just about drawings. Well, it is, but it isn't. There's a method around it. And it's really interesting going through the conversations and you actually, he gives us an opportunity. He gives us a word and says, try and draw this. And it's really interesting because everyone did actually get involved to try and draw their version of what that word is. And it kind of does show that sometimes a word can mean multiple things or how can you simplistically, simplistically be able to visualize this in a way. And, and it's, it's really, I don't want to use the word fashionable, but it's extremely popular. And mm -hmm. I know it was, and you're, I'm going to get you to say this in a minute, because you, I know it being popular more within Agile, within Scrum Masters, you know, being a visual facilitator. This is a, a big role that's coming up now. Um, Scrum Masters use it a lot. I used it a number of years ago when I was a Scrum Master, being the fact I was never satisfied with my drawing, but I did always use it for planning, backlog refinement, um, to make things a bit more interesting, and definitely retrospectives. It's always been in retrospectives. But... It was also used for. This is your key card, and this is where I can't remember the, the what it's what it was, was called. Um, it was a part of um, information science, and it was used um, to take complex um, ideas and convert them into imagery for, um, you know, how to use a washing machine or how to fix a washing machine. Uh, I, I actually had a friend who, or still have a friend who used to take the U S army uh, information and turn it into manuals so that ordinary soldiers who were starting out could understand how to take apart a rifle and put it back together again. But it's not, it's not an engineering manual. It's a how to, you know, you're, you're simplifying really complex things into a way in which people can absorb that knowledge and you, and reuse it. I'm going to use a word here and I may be not using it wrong. Is it very similar to wireframing? No, wireframing is, is a, a reduction in fidelity. Yeah. So, so why, if you were to wireframe what Stuart and Seth had done, you'd end up uh, without any of the labels. Uh, so it's, 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 that's a slightly different uh, thing. And wireframing is actually an engineering methodology as in uh, not software engineering, but, actual engineering that's where it comes from um, in order to very quickly sketch out how things might be structured uh, it got adopted or, or, or turned in something else through user experience but that's uh, another story and in fact if you look uh, for any child of three or four 
uh, what they do when they come back from school and show here, mummy, here's my picture. It's more than likely to be a wireframe. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> we also um, we also facilitated a really good event yesterday, which was around mental health and is actually in very particular at the moment because we're all experiencing it, whether we've not experienced it before, we are all started to experience it with everything that's happening within the world. And, and that was that was a really, really good event yesterday. Do you, I know you, I, I kind of, not gonna lie, I stayed in the background to do the facilitation. So, so I, I, I don't mind, I don't mind sharing. Um, I, I share enough to be viable, but not so much that it can come back to haunt me. And that's just experience. But uh, I do know, and I said at the outset, is mental health means different things to different generations. You know, the my parents' generation, if you talk about mental health issues, you're talking about people who've been locked up. Yeah. Um, in, in my age group, and I'm in, the, in my 50s, you never talked about mental health. You talked about people who had uh, mental breakdowns, or you talked about people who had members of their family been taken off and incarcerated. Uh, for their own good um, but you didn't you you weren't allowed to express that you were having difficulties with just living yeah. whereas I have friends now in their sort of 20s 30s 40s who uh, have that release and I think that's really good but also it, sometimes it's it's quite bad as well because uh, you know they they seek bad company so I know, I know someone that's uh, suffered from bulimia and she got into a group of bulimiacs who, who were actually uh, encouraging each other to do worse and worse things to themselves. It's so, also the people you talk to, the, depending, we have to be mindful with different generations and different backgrounds. Yes, you're right. It means different things, but it is nice that people now can open up a little bit more. I, I, I think so completely. It's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. I think it's a great thing, but it's also still counterculture for guys yeah. um, to acknowledge weakness because that's, it's, it's not weakness. It's actually a form of strength, but uh, we still have that thing that if you acknowledge emotions and pain and fear, then you're somehow less of a guy than someone that doesn't, which is obviously complete nonsense, but, it was, it was lovely the group that we did have yesterday were actually sharing which was nice because it could go one or two ways especially when you're talking about such a sensitive subject you know you can get people that close in uh me personally I decided to stay in the background because one with my personality I know what it's like and two I wanted to actually listen in and, and hear what other people were saying about it and I, I thought it was a really really good event people were actually opening up and it's nice that they felt comfortable to open up as well so someone used uh, we used men they used or we used mentimeter and one of the words was psychological safety mm -hmm. and I think um I think there was a level of it I, I wouldn't say there was a level to to the counseling level um and just in case you didn't know I'm, I'm actually a qualified counselor um because I did that because I was a youth leader and I did that for over 20 years. Um, so the, there wasn't that depth. And actually, to, to have that kind of depth, you needed a level of trust and the level of assurance over a period of time with someone that you just wouldn't get on an event. But in the breakout rooms, it was really interesting because I think certainly the breakout group I was in, it was more about, um, you know, we can do all this, but our work environments aren't listening to any of this anyway. They are, they're giving the words around this, you know, they're great at the language, but they don't actually enact it. You know, if you've been involved in a business that's been going for sort of 40, 50 years, and you've got managers in there who actually see all this stuff as weakness, uh, they do what they're meant to do, uh, and they, you know, they parrot it out as needed, but they don't actually engage with it. So, um, you know, when people turn up late, they don't want to know why. And there could be a myriad of, of reasons behind it, apart from the fact they want to hug their pillow for a bit longer. Um, so it's it's learning how to manage those social cues. Uh, now, obviously, we're not physically turning up, but I, when I was on this project for the government at the beginning of COVID, we still had a, a quarter to nine meeting every day. And if you weren't on it, someone phoned you to make sure you were okay. Yeah. 
I mean, and that's another level that you have as an agile coach as well. You are actually coached in coaching. Yeah. You are that coached in listening. You're, you're coached in, you know, not giving the advice, being able to be there to listen, to allow that person to talk through a situation, whether it's work or not, for them to either work out or for you to be able to guide them on that. Yeah. And as an agile coach it's in the name coach as well and a lot of people forget about that they think an agile coach is just somebody that's gonna you know oh, this is the best way to do it this way blah 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 but no we're also there to listen to you and we will listen intently and we will guide you and that's down to body language as well we're taught how to give the correct body language you have to be very careful when you listen to someone even if you naturally sit like this with your arms crossed which you can't see because i'm wearing a black top but even if you sit naturally because you find it comfortable with your arms crossed that can be a negative someone's opening up about something and that can give a negative vibe and you're taught that as an agile coach as well i think the body like the body cues are quite important but also the vocal intonation uh, eye contact, yep. um, all Im important things, but the, it's the listening and the uh, the waiting or the leaving of gaps for people to fill them in, which is what I did to you earlier. Yep. Um, the, it's, <laughs> oh, I've been coaching a bit longer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowing you to say that. <laughs> Okay, so you're you're older than me. No, okay, so uh, you're lucky I didn't bring that up. When you brought up your age, I was just about to bring up about the conversation we had when we were working out the age difference. <laughs> you're you're twenty one, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> twenty one. I'm still a spring chicken. Yeah, <laughs> twenty one years in agile. <laughs> you just yeah. came out as an agile baby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I think that the uh, it was interesting, um, but I think there was also a sense that we we it would be nice if what we could do in agile would actually transfer it into larger organisations. I was with groups of people that were all in enterprises, and you know their experience is that what we're talking about in this psychological safety is something that happens with HR and that. Um, you know, the larger organizations are perhaps less well at uh, training staff. It's not about adopting policies. It's about doing it. So. So what was the other thing? Oh, we had a discussion earlier about uh, next steps for Agile World. So Agile World will be staying. Are we going to go to Agile Universe? Because yeah. I think, we, you know, we've done the world bit. Can we, can we do Agile Galaxy and then Agile Universe and become masters of the Agile Universe? We could be heroes. Oh, <laughs> that my brother. I am a master of the agile universe. We are here to save you. <laughs> Where's my Tigger? Where's my tigger? Um, I'm actually thinking agile world. This is version one. So agile world version 1.2 or version two. We, we could do that. I mean, we still have to come up. We've got lots to do this week. We've got exciting week coming up uh with the we don't want to we're not calling it the closing ceremony because this is not the end it's a party because i think you know we're, we're celebrating what's been accomplished which should have been impossible frankly yeah. uh we, we, we and i don't mean we i mean we together all of us did the impossible there are um, just the two of us we're just the extremely vocal ones um <laughs> <laughs> are you suggesting i'm a loud mouth um so yeah. you know it, 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 in a you know even before uh this i don't know lockdown 27 that we're in or whatever it is people were tired yeah. of um going to meetups online and yeah. there was a you know the meetups were all dropping off the less and less people going to them because people were getting more and more demoralized and in that environment we decided to have a global meetup <laughs> um it so affected us. it hasn't affected us at all which has been amazing it yeah well it's it's i think it's uh it's the the format has affected some people some people have had much less groups than would perhaps normally done but then again it's like um tomorrow evening there's like 15 events all at the same time yes oh so as uh, it should be and uh, I, i'm thinking in particular about one person that had an event on at the same time as snowbird oh, who yeah. hadn't who hadn't realized i hadn't noticed that snowbird was on which is kind of like um <laughs> 
the central organization is calling us in and and therefore all the all the i mean they had about five and a half thousand people there so that's that was a huge response and i'm assuming that after the fact uh, uh larger organizations will get the the tapes and start playing them but uh i think uh it's really interesting that that happened the way it happened but What's more interesting is the context, not not their context, the context. So I, I liked the the first couple of sessions, and I obviously I learned from them. Um, but what what I saw was, in the context of everything that's happening at this festival, um, some of those things have more meaning to me than they would have otherwise, uh, and they have a greater. Uh, connection to the world rather than America or Europe yeah. um, and so I think that, that in that full context it's it's very interesting about what what actually happened but as far as Agile uh, Universe and Agile Universe will be knocking on your door over the next uh, few weeks yeah. and uh, asking to come in and sit in your on your sofa and have, expect a cup of tea and some cake from you uh, <laughs> I also have a bone to pick with you Carl you cheated on me today how? What did you do? Oh. You cheated on me. <laughs> there you go. Carl officially, openly cheated on me, even to the extent he was on a video call with me and then said, I have to go because he's technically. So how did you cheat on me today, Carl? Busted in public. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I started another podcast. Yes. Um, it, it's called UID.0. And UID.0 is uh, user uh, ID or identity zero, which is the super user uh, in any technology system. And it's it's actually a conversation around what was what is good experience and what is bad experience, but not just out of your head, but from actual experiences. And we wandered all across the place. This is between me and my friend, uh, Chris Finnis, who's actually uh, the drummer from a band called Stone Ghost. That's very okay. good music woman, so it's so, fine. <laughs> all right okay yeah so i've known i've known chris for about 16 years um and we met playing pool which is kind of how i meet lots of people usually um and um you know really interesting guy thinks deeply about stuff as a songwriter and a painter um and we just we just wandered through the last sort of week's worth of experiences and and we were all over the place we did touch on mental health we touched on we even hit politics um Whoa. yeah well you know it's, uh, don't be afraid of any subject uh all, all that we can do is expect uh, angry letters are you going to be bringing this moment up then tomorrow about being uncomfortable well no because it's a it's a it's a uh Every two weeks we're doing that, so I may have forgotten by then. I'm so jealous now. I get to see you daily. I'm still the winner. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, thanks for the shout out. I didn't, I didn't expect a shout out. Um, I, I sent uh, Sabrina a copy of the book I wrote last year because oh, yeah. it's got some hidden gems inside it that you wouldn't know about unless you read it. And <laughs> since I wrote it, I definitely read it. Um, and there's some bits and pieces about agile in there uh, and also how to work that doesn't involve using socratic logic and how socratic logic is destructive you know it was a lovely surprise i think i i just got off the i just got off the the agile world recording with you and i got a knock at the door and my husband went and opened it and it was a delivery for me and i'm thinking i haven't i've been good i've not <laughs> My shoes I want are out of stock. And, um, <laughs> and I opened it and it was at the perfect time because literally we just discussed about me taking some time to actually have a bit of me time, you know, have a look at my own goals that I want to do next and things like that. I haven't had the opportunity and, and it's not a bad thing because the things I've been doing here have been absolutely amazing and I want it all to carry on. And we were just discussing that. And then, it, do you know, what? I did, I did, I did because I looked at it and it was a beautiful gift. Um, the only thing that's missing, it's not signed. So I've now created an excuse that once lockdown's over, we have to meet up because you have to sign your book. <laughs> well, I, I told you what my wife said. She asked because I got a box of like ten of them, um, and she said, "So, oh, can you sign a few for me?" And I said, "Oh, that's really kind of you. Why? Oh, yeah, they're worth more on eBay." I'm like, "Oh, great, thank you." <laughs> so, my, my my wife my wife is a, is a, is more comedic than I am. 
she needs to be being around me for 30 years. Yeah, <laughs> I, agree with her on that. I, I can sympathize as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've run out of time now. Thank yep. you very much for your time this evening, and I'll catch up with you tomorrow, obviously a bit earlier, because obviously I've got to get ready for my event. Yes. So, catch you later. Thank you, everybody. Bye.